in America we have rights, but it sounds like you don't think that a visitor in your little paltry shop has the right to articulate his experience in dealing with you there. You see, he walked into your shop and you tried to gift him something, and then basically you took something off him that didn't belong to you. You also lied and stole his property bags from whoever brought them there to you to try to sell them to you. If you've been maliciously going into his accounts, dipping into his banks, dipping into his, his actual security deposit, or allowing Jamie to travel across the state line to get into his storage unit just fine because he allegedly looks like that man, you are way out of line. Your lie was that when somebody walked into your little bitty shop, you had the right to try to force them to put on hand sanitizer, which might have chemicals in it so that they don't quite function the same when they're in there. You see, liars of America know how to taint wipes, which happen to be plenty of times, and if they taint a wipe that you're using on your behind, just what do you think happens to the transference of the chemicals that people place there so you fall fast and marvelously asleep? The liars of America can be potent in everywhere they creep, but the liars of America will taint hand sanitizers, waters, and opening your wipes during this time of COVID in order to steal things from your pocketbook, steal things from your purse, or try to mesmerize you so that you actually like somebody else. Liars in the police force stole my entire photo album from me that had pictures of the women I cared for and who cared for me. The liars in America stole photographs out of my family treasures in my sister's house absolutely obliterating one photograph I had of my late spouse and me. The liars lived next door to her, named Eddie and his marvelous wife, whose name I can barely remember. And on the other side is a man named Jesus, who's a liar and shouldn't even be here. She'd be back in Venezuela playing soccer. But I don't like to talk about them much, but when I talk about them in this storyline, you'll think it's all a lie. But what I can see on behalf of America is the liars are already here. What I know about COVID, it is allowing American medical practitioners to get further into our lives from all kinds of medical doctors <clears throat> who have different beliefs about what they can and can't do to our lives. After staying at a St. Vincent's of where I did not want to be, players in America started to ruin me and openly started to stalk me around a community with their nuns, I'm guessing. Or was it the nun who did some metaphysical training over my sister to get rid of her cancer? It's hard to say. She did some special prayers, allegedly likened to the Lord's prayers, to help to move that cancer away. The liar in that sibling house took my property bags and threw them out on the porch, breaking my beautiful red resin dragons that were perfectly clean, crisp. She broke them when she threw them down. She threw down my tarot and oracle cards on the ground, and she left all my property bags in the rain. That's what kind of a person I had in my sibling set. Do you understand that there is no blame? There's just obvious intention in that hatred to ruin a life, and I don't want to be around that. I have an elder brother that tried to smother me when I went to visit him, and he couldn't even sit still in a chair for me to read to him from the house of the Lord. His fear was what he lied about, that I was somehow going to do something to his brain, which wasn't truthful, but his family was actually the ones chasing me about through the Midwest, and I guarantee his younger daughter, sorry, his only daughter, was out there with some older man pissing all over me when I drove around the Midwest. I then have a sibling named Cindy who broke one of my special hard drives by knocking it intentionally off my dresser when she visited and entered into my home and came up with me to my bedroom where I was working that day, not feeling like sitting in an uncomfortable chair in my office. It is often true that siblings get that chance to walk into a bedroom because maybe they help to move you, maybe they help to move you out of your situation, but she helped me to produce an entire Furby, what you might call it in the world of publicity, but an actual full costume that I designed in full color that came after the story Mulan, but I designed it to match my business, and openly it's full on. My sister Debbie has always hated me, and I can't help you with that, because her husband was the liar of Satan 
always full of alcohol, always full of hatred, always full of spewing lies in front of my dad. And openly, my father had to sit him down with his entire family to say, get your shit together, that's my daughter. But it didn't really help him in any way because he started to pretend as if he was someone in our family of a patriarch, and he's not. So that's basically the problems I have in my family, but at some point, my eldest brother, Mark, died. It's why I started to make Mark's Law, but I cannot find that content anywhere. Why is that? Who's been playing on my internet? Who's been playing in my family? Who has been playing into my social media accounts? At one time, it was a man named Michael, who actually had the audacity to try to put his photograph on my Facebook social media account. And his name was Michael. His wife was Michelle, a big, fat, ugly woman who was easy to tell that they were actually having tells in the storage unit in which I had my property. That she kept talking about things that I owned in my unit that I never talked about, never showed them. And then when I would go back before I got placed by Fisher's Police Department in a situation that I can't afford, the fat ass man that did that because he, I was able to convince the female officer Ellison to stop at that time, to leave me alone because they hire women to lie. That's the whole reason they hire female officers. Sure, to help with sexually inappropriate men, people who beat their women again and again, but Ellison was the problem in Fishers, along with another man who's white-haired and curly hair that I can't even remember, but for all I know, he might have been a pastor in the community moonlighting as an officer, who I let know I didn't like his show. I suffered through listening to it for three years and openly have the right to tell you that. His name was Tim Brock. He was the pastor of White River Church, and his arrogance on that pulpit and from that situation to the pew was lying to others as he spew about Jesus Christ being in his life where all the rest of his parish were sinners. And I promise you, it's totally tainted my future wife. 